uh, Malik was the recipient of, of a couple of your assists early in that fourth quarter and back-to-back threes. Mm-hmm. What have you seen from him confidence-wise? Because it looks like he's just kind of he's, – he's a shot-ready kind of guy right now. Um, he just uh, got an aggressive mindset. He always tell me to uh, try to find him when I'm going through my reads out there. And uh, I just know if his feet set – or if he get out in transition and I can hit him ahead and show off his talent with his athletic ability or his jump shot, it's definitely going to be something good. Malik said part of the reason the second unit's thriving so well is because you're able to read who's feeling it at a certain mm-hmm. point. How aware are you guys when, when they're starting to get rolling and do you like actively search that out? Yeah, I mean, I just got a good feel for it. Um, I, I played with some good guys in college um, when I was younger. Um, so I was able, that was my role, just to get everybody going. So now I can tell if Trey Lyles got it going or one. So Malik, Coach Malone, just give me uh, the freedom to call whatever, um, unless he's out of a timeout. So for the most part, I just try to run stuff for whoever's hot at the moment and just play aggressive at the same time. How helpful was Mason's screening to give you the room to be able to make these decisions? It's big time. Um, Mason's a wide body, so once he get a, a good hit on the defender, we playing two versus one down there with if the big is in the drop. So, um, and Mason's a rim threat, so if guys don't tag, I can throw the lob, but if they do, I got shooters out there. So, I mean, my teammates are uh, threats. That's why um, I'm able to find guys and we get good looks. You mentioned last night that when you were driving, you really sort of had to think it through because of their length and yeah. looking to kick it out. Yeah. How important is it for a point guard to sort of have a game plan as opposed to just sort of playing through his instincts? In um, I mean, it's big time. Um, I go to the rim to be aggressive, but at the same time, on ball screens, I try to read the second line of the defender. I really don't pay attention to who's guarding me. I always pay attention to the back, seeing what they're doing. Um, because I know if I do my job, you know, my defender shouldn't be in the play as much. So I just try to read the back line. You said on media day that Nicola was the one guy you didn't fully have a read on on the court, at least at that time. Do you feel like you have a better read on him yeah. now? And, and what is it difficult about getting to play with him? Um, it's not difficult. It's just he's so unselfish and I'm unselfish. So at times we don't know who's going to take the shot or things like that. So um, now it's, it's much easier for me to read him. I know if I hit him. And I speed cut, he's looking for me on the back door. And I know when I come up with ball screen where he likes it, you know, for the three. Uh, you see, I hit him last game for a wide open three. So I know where he's technically rolling, you know, more so now because we built the chemistry. A lot of been made up about you not turning the ball over, but it seems like you not turning the ball over has led to the rest of the bench not turning the ball over. Is there a correlation there in your opinion? I mean, we just talk about uh, just trying to get the ball on the rim. You know, it's so important in this league just to get a shot up. Because turnovers, guys are too fast and too talented to turn it over. Um, and they get out in transition and score. And transition points are detrimental in this league. So we just try to take care of the ball. But at the same time, play aggressive. Mistakes going to happen. Hell, I'm going to turn the ball over some more this year, mm-hmm. too. So, um, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, but we just try our best to try to keep them as, to a low minimum as possible. Has, has IT taken you under his wing at all, and does he teach you anything? And what have you learned from him? Uh, I've just learned uh, with IT. He just always tells me next play mentality, and if I miss a shot, keep shooting, and uh, just be aggressive, and just try to be a dog out there. Um, IT, me and him usually hang out um, a lot, and we text a lot, and you know I be hanging around his kids and stuff. So we just we just got a cool little vibe, and uh, I can't wait till he come back and give us a spark, also. Are his kids ever not playing basketball? Nah, that's all, that's all they do is play basketball. It's, it's crazy. They, they come up here play basketball. They play basketball on this live on Instagram. Uh, they love basketball, for sure. What's, uh, what's IT's presence like, maybe like in the film room, when you guys are going over, say, a game from last night? He's very, you know, Coach Malone asks, you know, everybody in the locker room, do you got something to say? Do you see something? Every time IT has something, you know what I'm saying, he says, and that just shows, you know, he's a stand-up guy. He's not um, afraid to let his voice be heard. And um, you need a guy like that in the locker room because when stuff going good, he'll tell you, but when it's bad, he just tell us um, people need to be able to take uh, corrective criticism. And um, with IT, being that vet in there and, and being, you know, up front is good for us, especially the young group we have. So. We uh we definitely appreciate it. Who else speaks up in those film sessions? Uh, you know, Paul speaks up. Um, lately, um, we didn't have no choice because Coach was really calling out on people. So, <laughs> so at this point, everybody got to chip in here and there and uh and say something. So um, 
usually those IT for sure and Paul are starting to be more vocal and everything. So. Is it just a matter of breaking down what you guys are seeing that he's looking yeah. for or what? Yeah, it's just like? more so uh, if, it, if Coach and Fam, he pulls up a clip and if you're involved in it, he, he say, you know, I wasn't on the floor. So if it, me and Malik in the clip, if we didn't switch when we were supposed to or they thought we should have switched or shouldn't have switched, they just asked us what we were feeling on the floor and what happened, did we talk? Because they so far away, you know, on court. So just getting our aspect and our outlook on on things because on the floor is different from walking floor. What role does fun play in the success of a team? And is it important for all players, some players, to play with joy? Yeah, I mean, everybody should play with joy. Basketball is a is a game, I mean, it's a business right now, but you, you shouldn't go into it, you know, with a bad attitude, you know, it's still a game at the end of the day, and um, if you play it the right way, it's definitely fun. And our fun is creating turnovers and getting out of transition, and, you know, giving the fans at the Pepsi Center what they came to see, that's fast basketball. So, if we can defend like we've been doing and uh, get out of transition, it'll be fun, and we've been having fun all year. Thanks, Thanks guys.